Hi, good day everyone. I am here to talk about feature-driven development, its history, the five-step development process, its strengths and weaknesses, and when it is best to use this kind of framework when making a software project. Feature-driven development is an agile framework that, as its name suggests, organizes software development around making progress and features. It was developed by Jeff DeLuca and a recognized guru in the field of object-oriented technologies, Peter Code. Like other adapted methodologies, it focuses on short iterations, each of which serves to work out a certain part of the system's functionality. What is Feature-Driven Development? Or FTD. FTD is an iterative software development methodology intended for use by large teams working on a project using object-oriented technology. The methodology description includes some prescription about what tasks should be done and what roles should be doing them. So many do not consider it a truly agile methodology. FTD is good for organizations that are transitioning from a phase-based approach to an iterative approach but are not comfortable getting rid of all tasks and role assignments. Why FTD is useful? Feature-driven development is useful because it demonstrates that you can focus on domain modeling on an iterative and incremental project. And because it demonstrates that agile-led methodologies can scale, FDD shows that teams can spend a short amount of time at the beginning of the project to establish a clear understanding of the domain in which they are working, and use that understanding to formulate a rough plan without getting stuck in analysis and design paralysis. FDD was designed to follow a five-step development process built largely around discrete feature projects. That project lifecycle looks like this. Develop an overall model, build a feature list, plan by feature, design by feature, build by feature. FDD is a development process that, as all other methodologies, has the objective of delivering working software. FTD mixes best practices that are all driven by what, it's, by what is important to the client. As I mentioned earlier, Jeff Luca was the creator of FTD. He proposed a solution which is a mix of five processes that would cover the, of the development of the model. It's listing, design, planning, and finally, the building of its features. So, to get a better understanding, it obviously helps to have a look at those five basic processes of FTD. First process, develop an overall model. FTD pushes teams to build an object model of the domain problem. Different from others, FTD modeling is a cross-functional, iterative, and collaborative activity. The team members, development, domain experts, and chief programmers work together to compose a model for the domain area and are guided by a chief architect. The idea is to have different teams proposing different models and later on, after getting reviewed, choose an option or mix them up. Finally, the domain area model will be merged into the overall model. It's actually a great way to start a project as it enables the team to get a strong understanding of the project of the project as well as a solid communication. Second process, build a features list. Here you can compare the features list to the product backlog in Scrum and the feature will be some sort of user story. After having the overall model ready, Based on the knowledge got during that phase, we will have to identify the features which are valuable to the client and which will basically guide the project. Features shouldn't take longer than two weeks to be completed, and if they do, then it should be put into more than one feature. They are usually expressed as an action, result, and object. Third process plan by feature. In the third phase, as its name says it, it's more or less about planning in which order the features will be implemented. It's about organizing. Feature sets are then assigned to programmers. Obviously, while planning will take into consideration different aspects such as risk, complexity, dependencies, team workloads, etc. Four passes designing by feature. As during all the processes, we use the knowledge we got from the first modeling process. The chief programmer takes responsibility to select a group of features that should be developed next. He will also have to determine the domain classes that will be involved. After the feature team is formed, they all start working together in order to get the job done, where the domain expert will be in charge of analyzing and designing a solution to each feature. 
This process building by feature. Once the domain expert is added based on the work done in the design by feature process, the class owners will have to implement all the items that are necessary to be able to support the design. Therefore, we work on the code that has been developed and with unit tested and inspected to ensure that it is all correct and approved by the chief programmer that will then give the OK to start building. What is so great about Feature Driven Development or FDD? According to Leia Karam, who is a dedicated and motivated marketing professional working at APM Hub, a software development company, FDD is amazing for big projects and is actually quite scalable and prone to get achieved success. FDD is very effective in helping with complex projects that are in a critical situation. The five processes mentioned earlier help when it comes to getting new members to join the team, especially in short periods of time. Feature-driven development is built around best practices that are recognized by the industry and it considers the strengths and weaknesses of developers. The fact that FDD you do regular builds ensures that the system is always up to date and it can be shown to the client. You can easily identify errors in the source code of the features. All along the processes, you have a high visibility of progress and results due to the fact that there are frequent progress reporting that are made at all the levels of the project. The first process, developing the overall model, makes us have a deep understanding of the scope and the context of the project. The fact that you have a deeper understanding of the requirements and the expectations that we do small alterations and build small parts one by one implies that the risk is really reduced. Less and what is surprising? Strengths and weaknesses of feature-driven development. After these strengths include, simple five-step process allows for more rapid development, allows larger teams to move products forward with continuous success, leverages predefined development standards so teams are able to move quickly. After these weaknesses include, does not work efficiently for smaller projects, less written documentation which can lead to confusion, highly dependent on lead developers or programmers. According to Dynamic Domain Corporation, Jeff DeLuca and Peter Code were both greatly involved in developing the feature-driven development methodology. Peter describes FDD as having just enough process to ensure scalability and repeatability while encouraging creativity and innovation. More specifically, feature-driven development asserts that a system for building systems is necessary in order to scale to larger projects. A simple but well-defined process will work best. Process steps should be logical and the work immediately obvious to each team member. Process drive can keep the real work from happening. Good processes move to the background so team members can focus on results. Short, iterative, feature-driven life cycles are best. I hope you have learned something and this has helped you to understand better about feature-driven development of this course. Have a good day everyone and thank you for watching.